Yo, what is going on? I thought it'd be cool to come on and do a video. And um, this video is called Pioneers. And I think the reason why I'm doing this video is because over the past few weeks, just some conversations with some friends talking about really the mindset of Christians and sometimes why it is that they struggle so much, um, you know, finding their purpose. They struggle with money. And I think a big thing is with believers is, number one, Satan lies to them, especially Christians, and tell them this is as far as you'll ever go uh, in your career, um, in your life, just financially. And people, what happens is, is when you get stuck, I think Caroline Leaf made a good statement, is that when you get stuck, especially you think in the same thought patterns, she says it digs these huge grooves in your brain to where it takes a lot to actually uproot those thought patterns and to change to something completely different. It's like, why do we have people like Elon Musk who, you know, they think multiple companies, um, you know, going to Mars, building rockets, clean energy, and, you know, he's got a mindset that if something, if you give yourself six months to do something, you'll do it in six months. If you do it in two weeks, give yourself two weeks, you'll do it in two weeks. And it's like people in the world, they get out and they hustle, right, for things, desires that they want. Most of it, I believe, is vanity. But there is still this uh, and this desire in them to create and build something, right? Genesis 1 says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the Bible says if you're made in the image of God, you're like Him and a lot of His likeness. And so, um, you know, you're created to create things. Now, I think Pastor Mark has... Um, you know, a good book in the spirit of faith where he says that you have pioneers, you have settlers, and you have museum keepers. And what ends up happening is that, um, you know, there are maybe people start out as pioneers or they never have been, or they end up as settlers or they settle in an area after a while and they get comfortable or they end up being a museum keeper where it's just like everything is about the past, you know, what they did in the past, living off like past accomplishments, whereas Paul says, I'm always pressing forward. And I think that, you know, you as a body of Christ, we need to start thinking this way. I think another thing, too, when it comes to money is because of what people say about money, it causes people to kind of back off from it, especially against Christians. And I think that's a tactic of the devil, because like yesterday, I'm in the gym. There's a guy, he's like 65 years old. He fought in the Iraq war, he was in the military a long time. Um, you know, he ended up stealing tons of gold in Kuwait, went to federal prison for maybe over, I don't know, 15 years or more, uh, shot somebody, his commanding officer, uh, he's murdered multiple people, and, you know, and and uh, for stealing, he said that the whole military, there's all kinds of corruption in the military, people stealing money, overseas stuff, corruption happening, and he just said everybody was as corrupt as I was, and everybody was stealing like I was, and so I didn't see you know, any different that the things that they were doing versus me. And so, you know, this commanding officer threatened my life and he was as dirty as me. So I killed him. And then, you know, he's just telling me this crazy life. And then all of a sudden we get onto this thing about preachers and money. He's like, well, I think preachers are crooks. And I'm thinking, you just got done telling me you went to federal prison for 20 years because you're a crook. And now you're mad at a, at a preacher because he's got money. Like, look, I understand that the 80s and 90s, there was all kinds of things that happened in scams. But even with the scams, there's always going to be the real, right? I mean, I got scammed in Bitcoin, $10,000, but it didn't make me stop. Like, I just kept going. I just kept, okay, I learned from my mistake. But when you have the real, you're always going to have the fake. But it's like people get hung up on, oh, well, this didn't end up working out, so I just quit. Or this is every you know, it's all fake. No, it's not all fake. Um, Jesus says he has 2,000 scriptures in the Bible about money. He says more about money than any other scripture. But like Brother Hagin says, people never read their own Bible, and they never uh, go into the Word and find out for themselves and study to show themselves approved. They just believe it, whatever is kind of the big saying, and that's what ends up happening with people. And I think people back off from money because of that. Christians, and they, they get stuck in this kind of like, they go to work, they have a job, um, you know, they maybe have climbed to a certain area or a ladder, and then they, they just quit. It's like you get, like Caroline Leaf says, Dr. Caroline, is that you get stuck in this thought pattern of, really, this is as far as I'm ever going to go, it's as far, you know, as far as I'm ever going to be. And if you don't look into the Word of God as a reflection, if you don't 
you know, God says, I knew you before I created you. I formed your inward parts. So everything that you came into earth with, God had already had a purpose with it and gave you all the materials that you need to do a job and to create something, uh, number one, to bring glory to him. But you also have a destiny and a job to do. And people get, I think they get stuck. They get become a settler, they become a museum keeper, and they never keep pioneering. And I mean, it's tough. It's hard. You got to keep pushing. You got to keep motivated, uh, keep good preaching. And that's why the Bible says you have to keep hearing the word of God. And really, people... Um, they don't see themselves, I think, owning businesses. They don't see themselves laying hands on people. They don't, like dad says, if you can't see what you can't see, you'll never see it. If you don't have a vision for like this next year, I was watching this kid on Rodney Howard Brown the other day, and he was talking about how he saw himself laying hands on people and, and having the gift of special faith operating in his life. And then it ended up happening, uh, where he ended up laying hands on a blind person. They, became whole and their eyes opened right before his eyes at the hospital. And so I think that uh, your vision is very powerful of what, how you see yourself, how you think about yourself. Um, Jesus says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. So Proverbs 23, 7, that's what that scripture is saying that as you be, you see yourself, that's you really end up what you walk, begin to walk out and, and be, you begin to do. And so I think Christians a lot of times don't see themselves progressing. They get comfortable. They get stuck. And um, they don't see themselves believing God for bigger and pushing for bigger things. And so I just really want to encourage people um, today, because if you look at the Old Testament, let's look at Solomon, 1 Kings uh, 4, and how he's an, he's a, you know, it's an Old Testament type and shadow of Jesus, but there's also a lot of these stories that you read and, um, you know, you wonder why God put them in the Bible. And so I want to read Solomon, for he had dominion over the region of the side of the river from uh, Tishposh, even to Gaza, namely over all the kings on the side of the river. And then he had a piece of every side all around him. And, and Judah and Israel dwelt safely, each man under his vine and his fig tree, from Dan as far as Beersheba. All the days of, all, all the days of Solomon. Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariots. And 12,000 horsemen. All these governors and each man in his mouth provided food for King Solomon and all who came to King Solomon's table. There was no lack of su their supply. He also brought barley and straw to the proper place for the houses and the steeds, each man according to his charge. And God gave Solomon wisdom and exceedingly great understanding and largest of heart like the sands of the seashore. Thus Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the men of the east and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan, and then of all these other people, is what he, he was wiser than all these other sons, and his fame, and the surrounding nations. He spoke 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. Also, he spoke of trees from cedar, tree of Lebanon, even to the hyssop that springs out of the wall. He spoke of also the animals, the birds, creeping things, of all the fish, all, and the men of all the nations, all the kingdoms of the earth, whoever who had heard of the, his wisdom came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And so if you like read stories about him, it said that he knew more in the, you know, first Kings, and he knew about everything. He knew about stone, he knew about building, he knew about all the trees, he knew about all the flowers and spices. I mean, his knowledge just, you know, he just went, like he said, it says that people came from everyone to hear his wisdom. Now I want to read about the queen of Sheba that came to, um, to see him. First Kings 10, 1 through 9. Now there was a queen of Sheba, heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord. She came to test him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a very great... Um, was it a retinue with camels and bore spices, very much gold and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she spoke with him about all that was in her heart. So Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing so difficult for the king that he could not explain to her. When the queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon and the house that he built, the food on his table, the seating of his servants, and the service of his waiters and their apparel, his cupbearers and his entryway, by which went up to the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. I guess... You know, she's really blown away. So she said to the king, It was a true report, which I heard in my own land about your words and your wisdom. However, I did not believe the words until I came and saw my own eyes, and indeed half was not even told to me. 
Your wisdom and prosperity exceeds the fame which I heard. Happy are your men, and happy are your servants who stand continually before you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God, who delight in you, setting you on the throne of Israel, because the Lord has loved Israel forever. Therefore, he made you king to do justice and righteousness. Now King Solomon gave the queen of Sheba all she desired, whatever she asked, besides what Solomon had given her accordingly to the royal generosity. So she turned away and went to her own country, she and her servants. Interesting that she, how she confessed, blessed be the Lord your God, and she really gave praises to God based on what she saw of Solomon and how that all that brought glory to God. And it's almost like, you know, sometimes now it's like people think the opposite will happen. Uh, you know, I don't really know how you do much being broke. But um, there's another scripture, 1 Kings 10, 24. Now all the earth sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. Each man brought his presence, articles of silver and gold, garments, armor, spices, horses, and mules, and set a rate year by year. Now, um... Now watch this. Let's go to Luke 11. The queen of Sheba will stand up against this generation on judgment day and condemn it. For she came from a distant land to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Now someone greater than Solomon is here, but she refused to listen to him. So now the Bible's talking about Jesus shows up. He's greater than Solomon. And people refuse to listen to him. And now the Bible says that if any man in Christ... And the, or in Ephesians 1, it says you sit in the same heavenly sphere as Jesus and rule and reign with him. And so you have the wisdom of God. You have the same mind, which is in Christ Jesus. And so really, the Old Testament was completed, and now there's a greater covenant here. And yet, it's almost like people think so small and the way that if we're you know brought up with Christ, seated with Christ in heavenly places, that at least, I mean, come on do half. <laughs> and um, and it's like people can't see it. And I, I think it's because they don't spend time in the Word and, and, and studying these things to where they don't see themselves as uh, producers and creators. They don't see themselves as coming with an assignment. Um, you know, I really think you can learn anything you want to learn. Um, just some of the things me and Dad were talking about the other day, it's like, you know, there's an old saying that you only use 10% of your brain um, back in the early 1900s. It's almost like they were encouraging people to think small. And then I guess as years went on, they said that, you know, you use a lot more, maybe 100%. I, I'm not sure. But you can really learn anything you want to know. Like, I remember learning with my dad how to build a house. Uh, one job, I learned how to build power tools. I've learned every Adobe product from Premiere to Photoshop to InDesign, uh, Illustrator, um, I learned how to build a studio to record, to play drums, bass, the guitar, piano. I've learned how to play almost all the main instruments. You learn how to preach. I'm going back to Bible school. I learned woodworking, how to build solar. I've learned how to build computers and networks. And I learned video. I was on a video team for a while. And so there's just, there's really, I think, no limit. But people don't ever push uh, to to do more. And so I think that their own, you know, mindset holds them back. There's a scripture in the Old Testament when they were building the Tower of Babel. It says, whatever they imagine would not be withheld from them, for the people are one. And so whatever their imagination, um, what they were thinking about is where they were headed. And so I really believe that, you're, that you really move into the area of your dominant thought. And so if it's the word, then that's where you're going to move. But if it's negative, you're going to go in that direction as well. And I think Satan lies to people, tells them that's as far as they're going to go. He puts roadblocks up, makes it hard for them. And, um, you know, that's why they never accomplish that. And so the Word of God is really a manual and a reflection of where, of how that you're supposed to see yourself. And I remember when the Lord started getting me to see myself different. I started having dreams um, that I would dress different, that I would drive different, uh, give me dreams of, of how this church looked. And I think he has to impregnate you with vision. I mean, one time I remember having a dream that I was wearing like these sheik's clothing from like Dubai, hanging out with these rich people. And it's like sometimes you think so poor that you can't ever get out of that mindset and the way of, of your thinking until God has to come and show you. I mean, with Abraham, he took him out and he said, look up at the stars. He said, count them. And he really had to get 
Abraham to see him being the father of many nations. And without him seeing that, he would have never really seen it. And I think that you have to be very careful what you're looking at, what you're listening to, um, the people that you listen to, because you'll never progress as a pioneer um, and do more for God um, with that, with constantly probably hanging around people who can't see themselves going any further. You know, you love those people. You spend, you know, I spend time with certain people that maybe need help, but also try to put myself around people who see themselves um, a lot bigger than they really are or going a lot further. I hang around people. One of my friends, you know, it's like coming into 2022, he bought five brand new trucks, probably paid 60000 a piece for them. But to him, it's not a very hard thing to do. And so you hang around a person like that, and it's just a different mindset that he has. It's just different knowledge. It's not that he's more special than anybody or he's a lot smarter. He just applies himself and studies a lot more, and he knows the laws. He knows tax write-offs. He knows business. He knows how to automate businesses, and it's just it's really cool to— but, you know, but he, he sees himself, that's not a, a hard thing for him, but you hang around other people and they're barely able to see themselves driving a new car. And this, one of my friends, him having five cars is, is nothing. And so I think, man, I wonder why Christians just have such a hard time seeing themselves prosperous. And it's like they've been programmed or we've been programmed for so long and listening to lies that we don't see ourselves moving forward as pioneers, see ourselves as creators, see ourselves owning um, businesses and being like a, the Elon Musk and changing the whole dynamic of the world. Why is it that all the the George Soroses and the Bill Gates and a lot of the wicked people have to have all the money and they they have vision for the country? And it's like Christians sit around going, "Well, you know, we're just waiting for God, you know, to um, we're just waiting for Him that you know this pro the prophecies that, that Mary Fran gave me these prophecies. Hopefully, they come true." And um, you know, I, there's a scripture in the Bible that says that a man uh, you know, needs to till his ground, and a man who, who chases fantasies will come to poverty. And so even though you get the words from the Lord and you read the word, you still have to be a creator and a producer and get up and work and to see those things come to pass. And I think many Christians sit around and, um, you know, we come in on Sunday, we rejoice and we dance, and, I, uh, you know, it rejoice at his word. But at the same time, there has to be vision. There has to be action. Faith without works is dead. Moving forward on, on a project, getting, you know, setting deadlines and dates and getting them done. And so Solomon was a really a good example of that. But also, um, you know, these Old Testament types and shadows show you that even when Jesus came, he was greater than all of them. And we have him, we have the Holy Spirit. And yet, why do we think so small? Why do we not see ourselves uh, changing the world or, or financially or relationally or, you know, see yourselves laying hands on people and recovering, see people getting well, writing goals down. I'm going to see this many people get well. I'm going to pray for this many people. I'm going to have a vision for salvation. And so I think that I just want to encourage, uh, you know, there are to, to be a pioneer, to think like the company owner, to think like, what does my boss need? I heard one guy say, he worked for Shell. He said, I find the five things that my boss needs and I do them for him. And that's how I ended up taking his job. Then the next guy up the chain, I'd find the five things he needs to get done that day. I would do my whatever 10 things I had to get done, and then I would do his five things. Then I'd move up again. And so he was thinking like a producer, like a creator, like an owner. And that was why he ended up becoming one of the top guys in Shell, and then he retired early. And, um, you know, but I think for the body of Christ, we need to have that same kind of vision. I mean, they've chased that vision for just People chase it for money, cars, and houses, and which, you know, stuff's not, it's not wrong to have, but if that's where your heart is, I mean, that's it's a complete waste of life to spend your whole life just trying to get stuff when really you're created for so much more of a purpose. I'll tell you an interesting scripture I read to, uh, a couple days ago. It said that in Ephesians, it was like two or one in the message translation that the Holy Spirit is just a down payment of everything that God is going to do in us and show us uh, for his for his glory, and it's and it was like saying how it's just the be this is just the beginning. It's the Holy Spirit and the gift of tongues is just a down payment of where He's taken us and what He's going to show us. And so I hope you're encouraged by that today. See yourself different. Write out some goals. Think differently this year of what you want to do for God. Get out of the 
the same way you've always thought of just getting stuck in this mindset of I'm just going to go to work, do the same job every day. And then do little things to start changing that on the days you have off, the, you know, an hour. They say, I don't know, John Maxwell saying if you do something one hour a day in five years, you become a professional at it. And so find little times to start maybe branching off these these new paths and things that you've wanted to do. And don't and stop seeing yourself as this is the way things have been for the last three years, 10 years, 20 years. And this is how I'll always be. I'll make this much money and I'll retire at this age, hopefully with this much pension. I don't believe that you were created to do that. I love you guys much. Uh, this is a video for y'all that um, has been on my heart and hopefully back with another one soon. Peace out.